Snapshooter makes automating your backups simple whether it is for your server, database, or application. It has several pre-configured recipes to get you started. We're going to use one of the recipes to backup a one-click installation of WordPress on DigitalOcean. Here, you can see our WordPress droplet and its MySQL database. You can also see here a DigitalOcean space, an S3 compatible object storage where our backups will live. By navigating to API then spaces access keys, you will also see a spaces access key I created to allow Snapshooter access to the space we want to use. When you generate a spaces access key, it will provide you with a key as well as a secret. Make sure to save both. Now that we have our digital ocean resources set up, we can move to Snapshooter. First, let's look at our storage. I have the space already connected, but if you want to connect a new digital ocean space, click Connect S3 Base Storage and fill in your endpoint, bucket, and spaces access keys. Now, let's connect our server. Navigate to Servers and click Connect Server. This will bring you to a screen that generates an SSH key and curl command. If you don't have an SSH key prepared for Snapshooter to connect to the droplet, it will give you the option to generate one. Copy the command and we'll go back to our droplet. For what we're doing, we can use the in-browser terminal. Click Access. We can now interact with our droplet. First, we paste our curl command. This installs the SSH key allowing Snapshooter to connect to your droplet. Once it's complete, we'll go back to Snapshooter. You can see with the successful test that we've been moved to our server screen where we can see our droplet within Snapshooter. This will give us all of our connection details and the ability to configure our first recipe. Because we're using a one-click WordPress installation, we're going to click the WordPress recipe. Now to give it a name, we will call this WordPress Demo. Once Snapshooter has completed its initial setup, we can click Next. This screen allows us to configure our backup. The first thing we'll want to do is change our site path. Our website code is going to be stored at the bar slash www slash html path. We will also have the option to backup the file system, set our compression levels, as well as set up our exclude lists. Due to a recent update with MySQL, we're going to remove the single transaction flag now that that is all done, we're going to click Test. This is our test output and all of the tables it was able to find. Go and click Save and Next. Now we have our first backup job. Let's set our storage. We have the option of having it back up once a day, setting our time zone, and our backup time. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to keep everything at its defaults, but you can set it to your own local time zone. This will also give you the option of setting an archiving policy. We're going to keep one backup at a time. Now we're going to click Set Schedule and Finish. This gives us a dashboard for this particular backup job. This is our backup configuration, our schedule, and our server connection details. We scroll down and also see our storage details. Because we do not have a backup prepared yet, we're going to click Backup Now. This will bring us to a live dashboard of what our backups will look like. If you scroll down, you will see the steps taken for the backup, as well as any relevant outputs. And with that, our backup has completed. If all of these are green, you should be good to go. Let's take a look at the backups that we have. If we go back to our backup jobs, we can click View, and see a list of all completed jobs and their status. Now let's load our backup to a different location. First, we're going to set up a secondary droplet. We're going to keep this one open for just a moment. Going back into our project, we are going to create a new droplet. Select Clamp, and we want something that is going to be the same as our previous droplet, which is going to be a regular 
at 8 gigabytes. We're going to keep everything else the same. Scroll down. Everything looks fine, so we're going to create this droplet. Let's go view our droplet once it's provisioned. Next, we're going to click Access and log into it similarly as our previous droplet. One of the first things we have to do is set up MySQL for the backup. I'm going to go into MySQL. I'm going to create an empty WordPress database. And that's it. Now back to Snapshooter. Now to restore the backup into a new location, we're going to click Manage. In our backups, we're going to see two files. A tar file, which includes our website code, and a SQL file, which will include our database code. We're going to do the website code first. So we're going to click Restore Instructions. I'm going to copy this curl file, go back to DigitalOcean, into our new droplet, we're going to paste that curl code. If we go into the public HTML path, we will be able to see our website code. Now we're going to do the same with the SQL file. We're going to go into Restore Instructions, but we're going to make a bit of an edit before we paste everything. We're only going to copy up until the user, paste it. User we're actually going to use this word because we have not added new users. We're going to have it request a password. We're going to set the database to WordPress. And we're going to enter our blank password. For security reasons, obviously use a new account with a clean password. Now that that's all set up, we should be able to go into MySQL and see our new full WordPress database. There you go. While we have posts, what we don't have is a WordPress user for the actual site to use to connect to the database. Let's go check the site code for the original website. We're going to go into the original droplet and check the config file. We're going to take that password. We're going to add this user to our new website. Back on our original droplet, we're going to add a new user with that old password. Once you've created the user, make sure to grant the proper privileges to that user so that it can work with the website. However, while we're granting all for the purposes of this demo, consider using the least amount of appropriate privileges. We're going to go back here, we're going to copy that IP address, and we're going to see our new website. And there we go. The website is completely restored to the new droplet. Keeping your website in two different places is useful for things like disaster recovery that allows you to make sure that somewhere globally your website is still up even when one area goes down. Leave any questions in the comments and happy building!